Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here. Welcome back to another Monster Hunter World video and another Weapon Top 5. Apologies, there wasn't one of these last week. It was a bit of a busy week, so I didn't get a chance to put one together, but we're back now and today we're talking about Switch Axes. For this episode, I teamed up with Welcome to Paradise since he's a Switch Axe main. You guys should know Paradise by now from the weekly investigation series. Together, we've compiled a list of our five favorite Switch Axes with a couple of honorable mentions for good measure. As always, keep in mind that these are our personal top 5 weapons. You should never be afraid to make a weapon just because you like the look of it or the element that it carries. There are no bad weapons and Monster Hunter is a game that offers plenty of variety as a result. But these are just our picks. So if you're thinking of trying out the Switch Axe and you want some suggestions for weapons to try, then you can't go wrong with any of these. Of course, if you do enjoy this video, then a like would be super appreciated and be sure to comment down below and let me know if you guys have any favourites that perhaps didn't crop up in this list. Now, kicking things off at number 5, we have the Kirin Thunder Peel. Admittedly, the base attack is a little on the low side for the Switch Axe at 560, but it does have a very generous Thunder element at 420. And it's important to note that 8 monsters in this game have a 3-star weakness to Thunder, with a further 10 monsters having a 2-star weakness. So as elements go, Thunder is pretty effective against a large portion of monsters that you fight in this game, including some noteworthy ones like Nogigante and Kushala. And while yes, more often than not, you might lean into the Switch Axe more so for its raw damage, if you're putting together a strong elemental build, then this will definitely have some great value. It also has a power element file, has 0% affinity and one augmentation slot, so all up, a pretty solid switch axe if you're fighting something weak to thunder. Plus, it's definitely one of the coolest looking switch axes in the list. Moving on from there to number 4, we have the Baroth Grinder 3. This is an incredible paralysis weapon. It has a base attack value of 735, the second highest in the switch axe tree. But on top of that, it has a whopping 300 paralysis element if you can awaken it with free elements. But on top of that, it also has a paralysis file with a further 270. So assuming you use this as it is, straight out of the box so to speak, then it's already pretty potent when attacking in sword mode. But if you go all out and get free element level 3 to unlock the full 300 on top, pair that with a paralysis focus build with the paralysis attack armor skill and you have a weapon that is both powerful with great CC potential. It also offers a bonus 15 defense, has 3 augment slots, 2 gem slots, level 2 and level 1. And the only real downside here is that it has negative 20% affinity but given all the affinity stacking skills you have easy access to, this really isn't an issue. You can negate this pretty easily. So if status is your thing, then definitely consider checking this out. And speaking of status, let's talk about number 3, the Jagras Raider 3. This has a base attack value of 665, so a little bit lower than the Baroth offering, but it has 0% affinity, and this Switch Axe has an exhaust file with 210 exhaust. Exhaust is great for tiring out monsters, slowing them down, so if you're fighting a monster that jumps around a lot and gives you a hard time, then piling exhaust into them is a surefire way to create some nice openings. However, on top of that, it's also worth noting that exhaust damage dealt to a monster's head counts as KO damage, so it is indeed possible to KO a monster whilst attacking his head in sword mode with this weapon. In addition to this, it also has a hidden sleep element of 240, so if you can awaken that, you then have the ability to exhaust, KO and sleep all in one weapon, which is pretty nice. It also has two nice decoration slots, one level 3 and one level 2, so there's plenty you can do with this weapon, and given that it's from the Great Jagras tree, it's also incredibly easy to make, so this really is a must-have if you like switch axes. Moving on from there to number 2, we have the Valhazak offering, the Hazak Demios 2. This has a base attack value of 700, 0% affinity, 210 dragon damage, which is higher than the Nogigante offering, and when you consider that 15 of the monsters you fight in this game have at least a 2-star weakness to dragon or higher, then much like I said with the Kirin Switch Axe, on the element front, this has great value for a lot of your encounters. And if you're farming Elder Dragons, which is a core part of your endgame grind, then this will for sure come in handy. Plus, it has an average Elder Seal too, so that'll help suppress some of the Elder Dragon traits. You also have a level 2 gem slot, 2 augmentation slots, and it's also worth noting that for this weapon, you only need 2 points in Handicraft to get White Sharpness, so if you throw on the Death Stench Legs and wrap with a Protective Polish Decoration, the one that stops your sharpness from depleting for 60 seconds after sharpening, then you can actually get some bonus damage from White Sharpness, for very little cost, so that's something to consider. And finally, in at number 1 we have the Axe of Demons, the Black Diablos Switch Axe, and rather predictably it has the highest base attack value of all the Switch Axes coming in at 805, 
with the usual counter that it also has a negative 30% affinity. Not the end of the world, mind you, as mentioned earlier, it's still very easy, thanks to all the affinity focused skills, to negate this and bring it into the positive. But it's something you always have to keep in mind with Diablos weapons. High raw, with a caveat. On top of this, it also has a bonus 15 defense, a level 1 slot, the power file type making it a great all round damage dealer, and if you want to, an ice element of 180 which needs to be awakened. But it's worth noting if you're using this weapon you're more than likely going to want to ignore that ice and run this with an elementless jewel instead to gain a boost to the base attack value. So as switch axes go, if you're not worried about the elemental weakness of your target, and you just want to dish out a lot of raw damage, then you can't go wrong with this. It's a powerhouse weapon, and when the file is awakened, it also looks pretty badass too. Now, those are our personal top 5 switch axes. However, as always, there are a couple of additional honorable mentions I want to throw in here. The first one, without a doubt, goes to Teostra's Castle. I did toy with the idea of including it in the actual top 5. After all, it is a nice weapon, but since Blast isn't as potent in this game as it used to be, I decided to drop it down to the honourable mentions. With 665 base attack, 300 Blast and a power file, this is still a great damage dealer, but in truth, one of my favourite things about this weapon is just how it looks. It's for sure one of the coolest looking switch axes, and still one of my favourite weapons in the game. And on top of that, the other honourable mention goes to the No Gigante offering, Dying Light. I've said before that No Gigante weapons are generally speaking a safe bet, and that's true, you really can't go wrong with them. Good raw damage at 700, power file, 150 dragon and high elder seal, plus it's relatively easy to make. You really can't go wrong with this one, but when fighting elder dragons or anything weak to dragon element, I'd still personally pick the Hazak Demios over this. So that's why I ended up here. But either way, that's pretty much it. Those are our top 5 favourite Switch Axes. Again, be sure to let me know in the comments down below which one are your favourites. And if you guys haven't had a chance to pick up the Switch Axe just yet, then consider picking up one of these weapons and giving it a try. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching. Take it easy. Catch you next time. Peace out.